Maria Joao, tell us a little bit about the various measures in terms of private enforcement that you have um, carried out in Portugal and to what extent, if at all, do you think those measures um, might affect the leniency incentives in your country? Well, indeed, the ADC played a very original role in, in trying to boost private enforcement in the country because we were invited by the government to assist in preparing a draft legislation for the purposes of implementing the directive. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we undertook this mission by engaging uh, stakeholders to, through an open and transparent implementation process and a very participated one, uh, basically under the belief that both tools are mutually reinforcing. Uh, we wanted to steer public debate about it so that ultimately the regime would gain traction once imp implemented. And um, in terms of incentives, well, uh, we think that private enforcement, actually the prospect of compensation, is helpful in engaging the common citizen in, in fighting anti-competitive behavior, in understanding the benefits of competition. And uh, of course, it means additional deterrence. It creates stronger incentives for companies to compete on the merits, and uh, and that's at the core of our mission. So we could never regard this as as, as bad news. That being said, of course, a proper interplay between uh, the two tools uh, um, is is essential, and it requires, for example, to uh, allow some degree of protection to to leniency applicants, for example, as to the type of documents in our possession, in our investigation files, that should be uh, protected from disclosure. And I think the draft legislation has fine-tuned appropriate solutions uh, in that regard. Um, I think, uh, uh, well, leniency applicants usually need to strike a balance between the pros and cons of, of applying, but. I'm not convinced this balance will change dramatically mm -hmm. once private enforcement becomes a common ground. And actually, it may, may contribute to destabilize certain equilibriums and to actually uh, create further incentives for leniency, if you think about it. And we start observing this uh, a bit in some jurisdictions. Once infringers start getting sued, including by other co-infringers asking for contribution, they may want to retaliate either by becoming uh, uh, leniency applicants in other business areas against mm -hmm. their rivals or by becoming plaintiffs in order to you know, gain, gain some sort of strategic uh, leverage over their rivals. Of course, this is an exciting new era for, for antitrust enforcement, but uh, uh, such as everything else in life, I, I rather see it not as a threat but as an opportunity. Well, so private enforcement is yet, is yet to become a reality in Portugal, I suspect. Uh, but cartel enforcement is in full swing. How would you characterize uh, that in your jurisdiction? Do you think it's, do you, would you describe it as heavy handed or quite moderate? Uh, well, I think there are three main features. I would highlight three main features of our, our policy approach because uh, we're trying indeed to uh, um, bring uh, our work to the public eye. We're trying to prioritize antitrust cases, including uh, 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 cartel cases that are more meaningful to the public in order to engage the common citizen on the importance of competition. Uh, then transparency, I think this is key, transparency. Um, uh, actually subjecting your, your work to public scrutiny is important uh, in, in creating actually uh, uh, some sort of pressure within or your organization to deliver results, to deliver the expected results for society. Uh, and actually also uh, uh, it uh, enhances your credibility, mm -hmm. your, your standing in society, which, uh, which actually strengthens your independence. And uh, uh, last but not least, a proper interplay between advocacy and vigorous enforcement. I think that's our, our, our brand. Uh, we think that if you want your stakeholders to listen to you with attention, if you want to be respected by the business community, uh, you need to be out there, you, you need to, to be approachable to a certain extent, to advise on the benefits of competition, but you also need to be feared. That's how you create proper incentives for companies to compete on the merits uh, with transparency and the right mix of uh, advocacy and vigorous enforcement. So with a stick, but also with a soft approach, yes. the advocacy. <laughs> yes, Thank absolutely. you, Maria Joao. Thank you.